Hey, Dr. Rick Wallace, the following segment is brought to you by Inbox Dollars. Inbox Dollars is actually something that I used a long time ago when things got really hectic and I needed some income to steady me until I recovered and got some things done. Uh, you're not going to get rich by it, but if you're looking to make some extra money, Inbox Dollars is exactly what you need to check out. Look, you can get paid for taking surveys, opening emails. Uh, and a bunch of other different things. The link to find out how you can do all of this is in the box. It's free to find out, free to sign up. Check it out. I'm out of here. Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. Uh, out in the midday, uh, went to meet baby uh, for lunch, had a couple other things to do, gym headed back to the office. I decided this would be a good time to double down on uh, my coverage or my particular um, commentary on this whole R. Kelly thing. I think I covered pretty much what I wanted to say about R. Kelly specifically. Um, my thing is, I'm not going to double down and dump on him. He did what he did. Um, and the consequences of what he did is coming on him. Um, you know, my whole thing is, I actually hope he does get a chance to recover. Uh, that's just how I am. And I, 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 I think of part of that is because of the fact of how this all started uh, with him being a victim and that never being dealt with still doesn't offer an excuse for his behavior and because of that he's being held accountable uh whether or not some of the charges are trumped up or not isn't an argument for me to make the bottom line is if one of those things are true then that's enough for me because that means that minors suffered at his hands and Anybody that knows me knows how I am about black women and black kids. So that's that. Um, my issue I have right now is there's this African proverb that I talk about and quote a lot. And the proverb says that if there's no enemy within, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. And the enemy within is wreaking havoc on the things that we say we want. We want to be empowered. We want to be we want to be liberated and authentically and holistically emancipated. But there are enemies within that literally destroy us economically, socioeconomically, politically, culturally, uh, filially from a filial perspective, as far as family is concerned, that there are so many enemies. One of the enemies is silent condemnation and deflection. Silent condemnation was a part of this whole thing because there were people who knew who said nothing. Silent condemnation is a very destructive force because it's condoning something by not taking action against it. There's no such thing as neutrality in this life. There are absolutes. You're either moving for something or you're moving against it. You're either standing for something or you're standing against it. There's no neutral ground. Neutral ground simply means that I'm condoning whatever has the dominant force because either I'm a too afraid to speak on it or I'm afraid that some kind of way I'm going to be pulled in and held accountable on some stuff that I don't want to be held accountable on. Or... I'm not passionate enough about it or believe in a position strong enough. And that's lukewarm. Lukewarm never wins. You either need to be on something and you're not on it, but you can't sit in the middle. And silent condemn condemnation comes from not taking action. That's one of the things we have. Nobody wants to sit up and take action. The other force to me is even more devastating. Deflection. Deflection is this bull crap that we have now when someone is called on something that they did, somebody defending them with statements that start like, what about, 
That means they're gonna bring up somebody that probably did something worse or did something just like that, who wasn't held accountable or who wasn't held to the level of accountability that that person was, or uh, at least they did, or at least, that or at least is at least they didn't do what blah blah did, at least it ain't this person. Both of those deflective uh, mechanisms and any other that sits up and says, instead of saying, okay, here I am as a man, I did something that I should not have done, now let's deal with it so that I can start rebuilding my life and start becoming a better person. See, that doesn't just work when it's working against someone else. That does, that does that, That's a problem when you're just talking about everyday things in life and you can't practice deflection and in and out. You, once you become a deflector, you're a deflector. That means that instead of facing stuff, you you bounce it off and push it some direction, other direction. It takes you away from accountability. Deflection is the tool used to avoid accountability. My whole thing is all the people that are talking about what somebody else did, especially if it's a white person, I don't give a damn what a white man does. I'm not measuring myself by a goddamn white man. I'm measuring myself by a standard I'm trying to hold my people to and I'm trying to live by that should excel people who are morally bereft in the first damn place. Why am I measuring some, myself by someone who is morally bereft, someone who lacks the capacity and the ability to live at the moral standards that they like to hold everyone else to? Why am I measuring myself against them? Why am I sitting up talking about what somebody else done? One thing that my parents did not allow to happen in the house is when you got called on something, talk about what somebody else did. You're responsible for what you do. None of the stuff that involves harming children is okay. I don't give a damn who did it. And just because they got away with it doesn't make it right and doesn't mean, okay, well, if that person doesn't get away, I don't want, my thing is, we've known from day one that this freaking system isn't going to deal with us on an equal level. We know that. If I go out and I commit a crime that a white man is committing, I guarantee you it's going to come down hard on me. So I know that. So I can't get there after knowing how this system is and then want to cry wolf because I'm not getting the same break that the white man got. The white man built the system for himself. So let's miss that bull crap. What we should be looking at is how are we going to, from this point forward, do a better job of protecting our women and children? How are we gonna do a better job of protecting our young boys? Because they are victims too. Because we don't even know if we're here if R. Kelly wasn't a victim having this conversation. We don't know that. We're not gonna pretend that Boys aren't victimized by men and women and girls and sisters and, and cousins and aunties. We're gonna not we're not gonna pretend that either. That's the little that's the ugly ass elephant in the room that I've been trying to get everyone to talk about for for years. When you do what I do for a living, meaning that you deal with people who have been traumatized and your job is to try to get them to a place of wholeness and healing and you hear these stories and then you got people close to you my wife is a freaking survivor so yeah i hold this stuff dear and when i hear people making excuses my whole thing like i said i'm not dumping on dude i wish him the best hell i done made kids from his music literally so i understand and appreciate his genius and i think that he's a victim of his own background, but also a bunch of enablers that capitalized off of what he brought to the table and they were eating off of him and nobody held him accountable. Nobody loved him enough. Nobody cared about him enough to sit up and say, dude, this is some bullshit you're doing and it's gonna get everybody screwed up. Let's get some help. If you don't get some help, I gotta go talk to somebody about this because it ain't right. No, see that would be snitching. No snitching is actually a street code that everybody's got twisted. Snitching is not about me seeing your dumb ass doing something stupid and telling on your ass. That's not snitching. Snitching is when I come with your dumb ass and we both do it, I get caught and to make things better for myself, I tell on you. Meaning we were equally involved in something that we both knew we were getting into together and then I broke the loyalty. I don't owe your ass shit if I don't know you and didn't agree to do it with you. Matter of fact, I owe myself 
to live at the level of my character, my conviction. If you're doing something that moves against my conviction, I got every right within my own self to sit up and say something about it if it's wrong. Matter of fact, I got a responsibility to do so. It really bothers me that we're sitting up and we're making all these freaking excuses. I get it. Man, that's R. Kelly. Probably one of the most gifted geniuses for his writing and concepts there is. Dude is a beast. And, 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 and that will never be able to be taken away from him. I'm not talking about canceling. I'm talking about holding him accountable. I'm talking about, hey, dude, you did something. You're going to have to deal with it. I'm hoping they don't hide you forever. Now, I'm pretty sure there's some people out there that went through this shit, probably want him here forever. I ain't mad at them. I'm a dude of second chances unless you just really show me there's no way that you could ever be rehabilitated. There's no way that you're ever going to change. Then I'm like, yeah. Or if you are going to be an immediate threat to anybody, oh, yeah, we, we need to put you where you're not a threat. But if there's a chance for him to redeem himself, I would love to see that happen. But what I'm not going to do is sit up because I don't like the fact that they're probably going to rough him up real bad. And there's a guy like Brock Turner, white boy who rapes a girl on side of a dumpster and get 90 days. Hell fucking yeah, I'm aware of it. I'm also aware that right around the same time there's a black dude in college that pretty much did the same thing that got 15 years. Hell yeah, I'm aware of it. That's how life has always been for us in this world. And my thing is, rape was wrong on both ends. Both of them, as far as I'm concerned, should have got some hefty time. Stop taking shit and start doing, doing what you're supposed to do. Stop disrespecting people and violating their person. If a bunch of this would have ended if the right damn father or brother was doing what they're supposed to do. We'll be talking about, man, I remember remember before R. Kelly, R. Kelly got popped, before dude killed. That's what should happen when these guys sit up and do these things. Oh, baby, I'm telling you, touch one of mine, I'm going to gladly do that time. Shit, I'm going to wake up for chow and every damn thing else with my chest stuck out. And I done, I done trained my boys. To do the same. We are not tolerating that shit with my daughters. And I can't see you doing it to nobody. It's going to be a problem. That's the problem. We done lost what manhood is. I'm not saying that it ain't some screwed up stuff. I'm not saying that. No, man, I know what the system's like. I've been through this. I know what it's like. I know what it's like. I know to sit up there and watch this motherfucker say, this, this motherfucker is sitting up lying. Y'all excuse me. This is where I'm at right now. This motherfucker is sitting up here lying ass. I know you're lying because I'm the only one that really actually knows the story. And you're sitting up lying your ass off. And you're supposed to be an officer of the court. And you're lying. And you're getting other people to lie too. I know what that's like. But let me tell you something. You know, when you do something, what you're up against. The only person that I got any total empathy for where I'm going like that's just messed up is the guy that got convicted and he didn't do it. He didn't do it. You know, he wasn't even there, but because somebody said it or because they got some circumstantial evidence that makes it feel, seem like it is. They come up and concoct some story that convinc that's convincing enough to convince a jury to convict them. Or they intimidate them and scare them and talk about how many years they don't get if you don't sign for that time. I know how it goes. Now that person right there that didn't do it in, 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 in doing time, yeah, I feel you. And, 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 I, and anything I can do to help, I'll fight for you. But if you did it, yeah, you don't want all that extra stuff that nobody else getting. I get that. My thing ain't even about the time or how many cases. My thing is you hurt women and underage girls. All the RICO statutes that they used to get you because they couldn't get you because of the statute of limitation on most of that shit. Hey, that's what they do when they decide they want you. My thing is if the right person would have been in his camp, and pulled his coattail and made him answer up and accountable, he might not have did any time. He might have got himself together and be looking back on life and say, man, I'm glad I healed. And then made amends for what he did wrong. But nobody, nobody 
stood up and said, dude, you can't do this. Everybody's eating, bodyguards eating, um, manager eating, record label eating, everybody eating off of him and his dysfunction. Nobody trying to do anything until everything falls apart and now it's every, every man for himself and now everybody's scurrying around and guess who gets thrown under the bus? R. Thrown under the bus. I think every last person that knew and did nothing needs to have their ass drugged too. That's just how I feel about it. Because everybody screwed up because nobody had some that hung long enough to say a goddamn thing. Shit. You know, you think I don't know about this system? I'm 54 damn years old. You don't think I don't know about this system? I don't watch cops roll up in the damn hood, throw people in the damn car, take them around the corner and beat the hell out of them, bring them back and dump them off. I done seen cops sit up and drop stuff in people's cars that weren't there. I've seen it all. I know this freaking system, but I also am uh, an expert in human behavior. And I know when you see enough to know that some of those people weren't lying that some of those people were telling the truth. And all it needs to be is one and is wrong. It don't have to be 15. It just needs to be one. Should he be facing life? My whole thing is the people gonna that, that are talking life are gonna try to justify it because of how long he got away with it. The people who are talking about let's be lenient, like me is gonna say, man, you take that part of his life away, the dude never been in trouble before. So he had a demon, he had a sickness, he has a background. I think all that stuff has to be taken into consideration. So I don't wanna hide him, I wanna help him. Now that's me, but I'm not gonna sit up and give him a pass. That's not gonna happen. So, it's so much, it's so much that we need to be honest about. I'm back at the office with ourselves we don't want to be held to a standard we don't want to be held accountable we more instead of being held accountable into a higher standard we just want to be able to get away with the same shit that they get away with that's how we're going to see ourselves we want to be equal to equal with them in getting away with stuff instead of raising ourselves above them in performance in dignity in care in cat in follow through that's what we should be sitting up trying to do and say, shit, I'm so much better than them because I do what I'm supposed to be doing. Not because I can get away with the same stuff they get away with. We've got stuff so freaking twisted. On that note, look, I'm going to get off of here. I got to get back in the office and get some stuff done. But uh, it is what it is. Those are, Some going to like it, some not going to like it. But I ain't never shot a damn video worrying about what somebody else thought. I told you from the beginning that this wasn't about likes, this wasn't about popularity, this was about me spitting what I believe to be the truth and what I held to be my strongest convictions and what I share as way of knowledge from what I spent decades learning. Other than that, uh, when you like it, I love it. When you don't like it, I still love it because I'm giving you what I have. Some of it you're gonna take, some not, some you're not. I'm good with it because I brought it and gave it. It's up to you what you do with it. On that note, I'm gonna get off of here and you guys have a great day.